Henry Rollins, the man, the myth, the machine. Hello, my name is Henry Rollins from the Rollins Band. All eyes turned up to the hero! The Rollins Band are rock's elite titans of muscular and devastating rock and roll. You can, you can taste the crotch in every beat. Every night, we strive to utterly ruin you. I am divine. Maul you, push you around, elbow you, cut in front of you in line, but have you thank us on the way out. That, that's what we try and do. We're really lucky. We got five cool people in one band at once, and no arguments, you know? Everyone gets along and makes life nice. recorded the record out here at this log cabin in uh, the middle of nowhere because it enabled us to make a whole lot of noise night and day and not worry about neighbors. We could go seven days a week as many hours as we wanted and hopefully create a very free musical atmosphere and that's why we did it. Having recorded in this cabin like this in a very kind of homey atmosphere, I wouldn't want to go back to a studio again after this. This was, this was too good. I came up here with a band to make the album because we wanted to be undisturbed. We wanted to be in a raw and unforgiving climate. The studio. It's much warmer than this. Yeah! I'm Chris. I play guitar. My name's Sim. I played drums for the Rollins Band, eh? What makes this record different than the last record, Chris? I don't even remember the last record. Well, there you go. So it has to be different because we can't remember the last one. I think you got a low self-opinion, man. I see you standing up by yourself. I'm Melvin Gibbs from Basis for the Rollins Band. Having a new member in the band, Melvin Gibbs, on bass has uh, really changed things. Uh, he and the drummer, Sim Kane, together have formed this really amazing rhythm alliance. I'm from Brooklyn, all right? And I play with a lot, everybody from, I play with John Zorn, play with Ron Shannon Jackson, who used to play with Ornette Coleman. So I've done stuff with Ornette. I played with World Saxophone Quartet, Eddie Palmieri. I mean, I play with a lot of people around. Hi, I'm Theo Van Rock, fifth member of the Rollins Band, and producer of the Rollins Band. The album is actually being recorded on videotape. So uh, every time we uh, get a tape, they make a backup, so there's a, a backup master. You can do that through digital copying. And uh, so at the end of this, instead of a bunch of rolls of two-inch tape, we're going to end up with uh, a home video collection. The sound of the album is um, warm, open, and honest. Henry's been known as somebody who is always like uh, very strong in his, uh, uh, let's say, screaming. And now we are doing the the singing thing as well. who can look at himself in the mirror and say, hey, I like you, man. My next guest is the lead singer of the Rollins Band. Last year, the group performed uh, over 180 concerts. Please welcome singer, songwriter, and author, Henry Rollins. Henry. <laughs> Y'all get in for free? Yeah. Oh, MTV Unplugged. I hope you keep our minds well bugged. So, uh, Henry, Henry, why, uh, why a ballad? Oh, I see you everywhere. You were in a Gab bag. I've seen you on several interviews on MTV News. This, you posted 120, what, twice? Two, three times. You're, you're around there, girlfriend. 
I love it when you call me that. <laughs> uh, several months ago, I was in Houston, Texas, and I was in a movie called The Chase with Charlie Sheen and Christy Swanson. And I was the cop chasing Charlie all down through Southern California to the Mexican border, and it was really fun. And I know I will definitely be catching a bit of flack <laughs> about, about having a badge and a gun. I mean, I feel like a combination of Bruce Springsteen and Sylvester Stallone out there. I don't know whether I'd be busting bad guys or signing autographs. I'm kind of like being a star. When I'm not on tour with the band and uh, doing stuff with them, which takes up a good deal of the year, I go out on my own and I do speaking engagements. And I've been doing this for about 10 years, recapping stories, things that happened to me that are true, that had an impact on me. I go on stage and just talk about some things that have happened to me. And usually, no matter how catastrophic something has been up to a certain point, if you give it some distance and use your imagination a little, you can make it pretty funny. I mean, whoever came up with that line, uh, tragedy plus time equals comedy, I think is pretty right on. So anyway, I worked at this pet shop, and I'd be up in the fish department scooping out so many dead fish. Man, that place had more dead animals in it than live animals. I'd go in there on Saturday to, like, you know, to clean the shit and everything, and they're just half the store's population would be dead and dried up. All the, like, all the rodents were like, <laughs> they dry up. They don't have much moisture. They don't really rot. They just kind of... And they always die in the most horrific facial expression. I have a publishing company called 21361, and those numbers represent my birth date, February 13th, 1961. I put out books, CDs, and videos of myself and other people. We've had the company for about eight or nine years, and it's doing very well. I was in a band called Black Flag from 1981 to 1986 and I was the singer. And they're kind of a legendary, you know, punk rock band, I guess. Drink, drink, don't think, drive, kill. I'm putting out a book of uh, all my Black Flag journal entries from 81 to 86. When we first launched the original punk rock idea. I mean, none of us ever thought it would be this good. <laughs> Look at this. Anarchy in the UK. <laughs> Who would have thought? I hear a lot of people say, why are you so angry? I always consider myself kind of a cute, cuddly, kind of funny, cute kind of guy. Shine, 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 shine. Oh, yeah. 